In this movie, I briefly illustrate how to work with this PowerPoint. Now, what this PowerPoint is about, it is an activity that I developed to illustrate how we can create um, activities or learning resources. And by learning resources, I myself <coughs> mean computer-based activities that allow students to actually attempt to solve complex tasks on their own or with someone else. But these are pretty much very much remedial, uh, what I call remedial activities. And I call them remedial because when students actually, because they allow students to do very focused activities. And as a result, they themselves have to rely only on what they know, which is very different than in a classroom environment where they can actually get quick answers from someone who understands the topic better. And as a result, while this is very supportive and good and gets the class going, sometimes these classroom activities hide, allows, hide the very problems that some students experience and cannot actually bring to surface in a group activity or in a classroom activity. So I like um, combining classroom and group activities with uh, activities where students actually work on their own or maximum with another person on the computer and they have to solve language related problems by themselves or maximum with another person. So this is a PowerPoint <coughs> that you will actually uh, be able to actually watch on your own. But I will take you through uh, the logic of it. So clearly, in order to progress from one slide to another, all you have to do is to click anywhere, really. But I put this picture here just to make it easier. Now, this PowerPoint is a learning resource, but at the same time, it contains some explanation, theoretically based explanation, why I did things in it the way I did it. You can read it for yourselves. I will not take you through it. It will be just too long. So this is a more um, detailed explanation. Now, as you will see, the, ob the um, main objective of this learning resource is for students to actually engage in a computer activity game, in a computer game, and then actually, as they are trying to solve the game, they actually talk one through it. So, or talk themselves through it. So they will be doing what I have done once in the past, which is to play a game and at the same time explain how I did that. It's a very complex activity. The student doesn't have to know that this is the objective of this resource. Too much stress is no good. So we're just taking slowly the students through different games, through different activities, just to warm up the student, for the student to feel supported. And only when it actually is already appropriate, then we can ask the child, can you do it? Can you do what this other person did? OK. Now, you've got these explanations here. You will see that I only created a resource for the stage one, which is the introduction stage. The other stages are stage number two and number three. You can think of this resource as part of the um, module. And um, each of those activities, one, two, and three, <coughs> allow you first to, one is to introduce the student to what you want them to do. And the other activities allow students to build more complex texts because they already know what it's all about. And while you're actually thinking that they are producing more complex texts and therefore the language load on them is more difficult, in fact, what the student is thinking, well, they're playing another game. And that's the idea. That's the idea so that they don't actually feel too stressed about the whole thing. So um, 
this is this is not the full of course rationale when you click on those um, question marks you get more detailed explanations some of you may remember what it is now there are different ways in which different um, educators or pedagogue organize their understanding of students needs that they want to address through a activity or through a learning resource. I do it using generic um, skills like the communication strategies skills or com communication skills, information literacy skills, lifelong learning skills, ICT, critical thinking. I didn't put them here all because as you can see, there's not much room in this PowerPoint for all or in this slide, but you can, you can have them all, you can have whatever you wish. These are the ones I sort of explained here. Now, so we have on in the left column, we have the um, skills against generic skills against which I then try to map out the kinds of skills that I will address in my resource and then the kinds of learning needs that these skills, these actual skills may generate in students. So I've got a little bit of a map here and I like it because it, I can actually see it and you can see it later on in other slides how it actually um, allows us to produce increasingly detailed um, map of what we will do in an activity. We go back here. So for example, when I look at um, presentation skills, you can see that in the in regard to the generic skill of communication, this resource will address presentation skills and the possible needs that it is targeting is text delivery, fluency and comprehension of text. Now they sound really big. This resource does it in a small way and the entire skill of presentation will not be actually reduced to this particular resource, but this resource is one brick in the wall. The more bricks we put, the more the bigger the wall. Okay, so you can read it for yourselves how I, how I actually accounted for these learning needs through the activities of this resource. And this is explained in this big um, a box here where I say what kinds of activities are in this resource and how I'm going to do it. That's quite useful. So let's go back. So this is done for each of the uh, um, skills. You can read it. All the things in red are basically the kinds of skills and the kinds of learning needs that I have focused on in this learning resource. Let's go next. Now, here I illustrate, I produce a summary how everything that is in this resource and the things I explained before actually help to address those main principles of diversity, inclusion and learner centeredness. You can read it for yourselves in peace and in detail. Now, here's the game itself. So what is the game about? The game is about Sam, Sam playing games. Let's have a look what it is. Now you, you can run the game yourselves, but you will see speakers mean that there is a recording here. Right. What is your name? Right, so the student can click. Right, so through these speakers we have voice recording that allows Sam to tell our students uh, what he wants to show to his peers. And he says, these are the games I play. And the child can click on any of, the, of these pictures that take the students or children through the descriptions that Sam produced about the games he plays. Right, the assumption is not that the student will understand everything that this person says, depends on the level of a student. 
So this is not important. What is important here, but the student watches it gets a feel for the game, what the computer game, what computer games are all about. I know that you may think that lots of students know well, the, what lots of children are actually raised with computer games. This is true, but not all of them. And there is another thing happening here. Um, what Sam is also doing is not just showing what kinds of games he likes to play. He's also taking the child through the story about how he does it, which is exactly what we want our student to do at the end of this activity, or at least at the end of the second activity. Right? So the child is learning here not just about the computer game itself, that too, but also how to talk about it. Okay, let's go back. So you've got another game and another game. So in this resource, I am warming up the student to the games, to talking about them, to learning the things that uh, assignment one is asking us to introduce students to, which is adverbial phrases and preposition, but I'm doing it gently. Once the student goes through this activity, you can actually create activities about the frog and activities about Australian map the Australian map and the surroundings of Australia and you can do it in a more complex way right you can actually introduce more words more phrases more things in the second activity and in the third activity let's click on next now after Sam showed the student the games he plays he's now inviting the student to play the games which is okay. So this, when students click here, what is happening? The students are taking, taken to the game itself and they can actually play it. And as many times as I played it, I'm never good at it. So we're just going to close it here. <laughs> All right. They can go to the frog game and they can go to the Australian puz uh, geography puzzle game. And now what's happening, Sam is inviting the child or the student to talk to him. So, did you, did you play? What happened? What happened? And these are just basically introduction. This is to warm up to the student to want to actually talk to Sam, so to speak. So what happened is a wonderful question because it warms up the child. It allows the child now to think what can he say? How much can he say? And if the teacher is watching the child, the teacher can actually assess how much help the child will need uh, with this particular activity. Now, what do we do here with those green boxes? Well, actually, in order for the child to actually record um, themselves doing the games, we're just now actually putting the words in child's mouth, so to speak. Why? Because not all children have them. I mean, they might, might have complex um, vocabulary and be able to actually talk, but it's one thing to talk when they want to talk, and it's one thing to talk about a new thing, a new experience. So let's, let's put the words in their mouth. Did you click on start? Again. And ch children love it. Anything that moves talks Right, and now the child can actually click here on help. Oh, here's the start button. Okay, so this is the start button. Okay, well, let's go back. Did you see the eggs? Whoops, here's the egg. There, there it was. I just, we wrote here eggs in the basket. Just, it never hurts. So let's go back. Whoops. Sorry, I just pressed too many things. Were the eggs in baskets? Well, were they? Whoops, here they are. And look, here you have one basket on the top, the adverbial phrase in the middle, and one on the bottom. Cool. And how many baskets did you see? 
example, how would anyone remember? Let's have a look. One, two, three. Okay, let's go back. Let's go next. What did I do here is actually I allowed the student to actually record themselves. Not necessarily saying, did you play? Yes, but can you record actually your voice saying the same things as Sam is saying? Did you play? And by clicking here, now this is not working in this version. What we have to do is to get out from the presentation mode and actually record students' voice um, when we actually are designing a PowerPoint. But if you did it on the smart board, this particular exercise, and ran it actually on an individual computer, not necessarily using this big smart board, because you can actually use a smart board software to create what I just did now, so that smart board games are actually run from individual computers or tablets. Anyhow, the child can record his voice if they want to, or we can just progress to the next activity. Sorry for that. Um, now, in the next activity, what do we have? We, we still have, did you play? Did you play? And the child can say, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. What happened? Right, did you notice we're putting words in students' mouth? But well, that's okay. What we're trying to get now, the student, is actually to do a number of things here. So they can compare the writing with the speech. They can actually see the possible or hear possible answers. Yes, I did. Oh, sorry. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. <coughs> now, what we want the child actually to start <coughs> writing. So we have shown some examples here. Yes, I did. I did well. Now here, yes, I did. All I have to do is to write, yes, I did. They can actually have a look. Yes, I did. Okay, so this is what you want me to do. All right, so now the child can write, yes, I did here. Did you see the eggs and what the child is going to write? Yes, I did. Notice I didn't produce any support because yes, I did was before. They can actually write it without my support. And here, were the eggs in baskets? Yes, they. Yes, they. Yes, they were. Right. So you can produce support as well, and the child can see how to write it. And again, right. How many baskets did you see? Three. Okay. And you can send them to a help file. They can see three. They can go back and they can write it. Okay, so there's a lot of support here. Now, they can here see all the right answers. Did you play? Yes, I did. What happened? I, I did well. Yes, I did. Did you see the eggs? Okay, next. Now, what we want them to do is to move from, yes, I did, there were three eggs, and so on, now to fuller sentences. But we're doing it slowly. We're still putting words in their mouths, right? But the same words, notice, we're not moving away and so on. If they want to cre create richer sentences and put more, wipe out what is in here and produce larger sentences, okay? So nobody is actually enslaved to doing anything that I actually wrote. These are just prompts. Now... I played, I did well, I saw a, I saw an, I saw an, what could it be, an egg? <clears throat> I can't do it in the PowerPoint, but what basically here is, is a facility to actually shift this um, square away and see what's underneath it. And then the child can actually then type in this <clears throat> square the word egg. And goes for the next sentence and the next sentence and the next sentence. And here it is. It was fun. It was fun. It was fun. Okay. So is now Max or whatever his name is ready to record his game? He will tell you. Let's have a look what's next. 
Okay. Here yeah, will happen, and now he can tell you I played, I did well, I saw an egg, I clicked on start, I saw three baskets, I threw the egg into the basket. It was fun. Now these are just prompts, of course. Once we actually put them in front of the game and ask the student to actually record themselves as they play the game, we can help them and do it with them, be there by them, or we can actually watch what they will do because they may actually be able to do more than these sentences have shown. Now, what I did, I produced some games because after students do whatever they do in this resource and they're tired and whatever, we can actually show them some funny games. So there are different games on different pages and you can work with students or students can actually click on them and they can actually play them. Yeah, there's a game, one with the adverbs, I actually looked for one, just especially for your assessment. The dog is next to the table, where it will be? Oh, here it is. I must have done that game before. The dog is in the box. Oops. 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 Right, you get an idea. Anyhow, so the idea is basically for us to support students, to do it in the way that allows them, to, it's fun, it it's allows them to see what they can do, look for answers, find answers. And after they've done your activity, they also can expand and just have games, to play games and do other things than just the things that we want them to do because there are so many things out there that students, yeah, students can do. Tab, okay, so T. Let's see if we get it wrong. Okay, so you get the gist of what this resource is about and particular principles that it actually adheres to and you can read about it in detail. Thank you.